Hello, viewers. Sir. Welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So today we are going to discuss a very important concept that how a linearly independent vector can be made the orthonormal, and this process is given by the great mathematician Gram-Smith process. So this process is called the Gram-Smith process. So let's do the. Now in the previous lecture we have seen that. If we have a orthonormal basis, ortho, if we have a orthonormal sets, vectors, then automatically these vectors are linearly independent. That we have seen. Now the question comes that what about if the set of vectors, set of vector is linearly independent, can we say that they are orthogonal or orthonormal? This process that if we have a set of linearly independent vectors, can we make them orthonormal to each other? So that is what we want to do. So this process, how we can make the linearly independent vector to the orthonormal basis, that is given by Gram-Smith process. So let us see what is going to be in the uh, Gram-Smith process. So before that, we will discuss about few concept about the projection. So now, I know that suppose I have a vector, this is my vector, I call it maybe uh, V and suppose I take the another vector that is my vector U. Now, this is the angle between these two. So, I know that if I take the dot product u dot v, then this can be written as magnitude of u magnitude of v cos theta. And from here, we can find that suppose we have two vectors, then it is equal to dot u dot v and if we want to find the angle between these vectors, so this is cos inverse u dot v divided by this one. Now, we know that if u and v of unit magnitude, then this will be just equal to cos theta will be equal to u dot v. So, these things we already know. Now, what I want to do? I take the projection of this vector on the vector v. So, this is suppose O and this is A, this is my B. So, the position vector I am taking the position vector O B, we represent by this as a vector. So, this is basically u, the position vector. Now, I want to take the projection of this O A. So, now I can write that O A. So, this O A I am writing in the direction of V. So, this O A is basically U. So, this is U I am taking cos theta. So, that is the projection I am taking. So, this is my O A or means I am talking about the magnitude. So, this is equal to the magnitude of this one. So, I if suppose I want to find out the projection of u in the direction of v. So, this is equal to I am taking the projection u cos theta into the direction of v. So, I will take v direction. So, v at is this one. 
Now, from here I can write from here u bar cos theta, u bar means this is magnitude. So, basically I told you that this is same as this one. So, in the vector form we always write with the one this bar. So, that is same as the magnitude. This double bar has the some advantage. So, that we going to discuss later on. So, this is equal to this. Now, this V is I know that this is equal to V divided by its magnitude. Now, from here I can write from here. So, this one. So, I can write projection of u on v, it can be written as u and the cos theta we already know from here. So, I can write here u dot v divided by this into v magnitude v and this will cancel out from here it become u dot product of v v divided by length square. Now, if v is 1, so it is a normalized vector. Now, from if it is this then my projection of u on v becomes just taking the dot product of u with v multiply by v. Because u dot v is just the dot product. So, it will give you that the quantity and v is the unit vector. So, that will be the projection vector of u in the direction of v, where v is a unit vector. So, this is how we take the projection of a vector over the another vector. For example, now let us take one example. Suppose I take it is r square, so it is x axis and it is y axis and suppose I just take one vector. So, I call it maybe 2 3. So, this is my vector. So, I call this vector as my vector u. Now, I just take the projection of this u on x axis. So, I know that x axis, so this the vector I am taking in this direction is a standard vector. So, we call it E 1. So, I know that E 1 is the unit vector 1 0 and E 2 is 0 1. So, these are the standard basis in the R 2 that we already know. So, I just the take the projection of this one. So, I am taking the projection of this along the x axis. It means if I take u and I take a vector in the x axis. So, that vector I know that is E 1. So, if I take the dot product with E 1 and then I write E 1. So, that will become, so I am taking u dot product with E 1. So, it will be 2 and E 1 and it means it becomes 2 0 and you know that if I take the projection on this one. So, this point will be 2 0. Similarly, so suppose it is O it is A it is B. Now, so my O A so, I take the projection. So, this projection vector is my O A basically. So, this is a projection of u on x axis and that should be 2 0. Now, I take the projection of u on y axis. Let us take this one. So, this is equal to I am taking the dot product of u with the 
the vector in the direction of y axis. So, I that I am taking the unit vector that is the standard basis I am taking and this is E 2. So, if you see from here this will be equal to 3 E 2 and that will be 0 3. So, this is my projection vector of u on the x axis. Also, so this can also I can write let us see what will happen if I take u and I will remove this part from the u. So, I will just write u minus projection of u in x axis and I know that x axis and y axis are orthogonal to each other that we already know that E 1 is orthogonal to E 2 and this is. So, I can say that E 1 and E 2 are ortho normal basis and they are also standard basis that we already know also called standard basis. So, that is why we already know that working with the standard basis is much easier as compared to the other basis. So, instead of the standard basis we are going to introduce other type of basis which have the same property at the standard basis. So, these are the orthogonal to each other. Now, I see what is happening u minus projection of u in x axis because if you see that this is my u. So, I can write this as a u cos theta component and u sin theta component that we already know because it is a right angle triangle. So, using the Pythagoras theorem we know that that u cos theta square u sin theta square that is equal to u square. So, this is a Pythagoras and this is happening because they are perpendicular to each other. So, these bases are here. Now, I am taking this projection on this. So, let us see what is going to happen here. My u is basically this vector 2 3 minus I am taking the projection of u in the x axis. So, this part I am removing from here. So, basically I am removing 2 0 from here and that becomes so 2 minus 2 and 3 and I am getting this part. So, from here you can say that now from here I can say that u can be written as if I taking the projection of u in along v plus I can write u minus projection of v. It means, so this is the projection in the perpendicular vector to u. So, that I we can say. So, this projection of u we are taking in the direction perpendicular to the vector v. Okay, so, that is here we are doing. So, we are taking the projection of u along v and this is the projection of u in the direction perpendicular to v. So, this is my projection in the direction perpendicular to v that is perpendicular to this. So, I am taking here as a y axis. So, that is my u. It means I can split my u into two parts one in the direction of v another in the direction perpendicular of v. So, here I am taking v maybe I can just instead of v I just write x axis because here we are talking about x axis. So, I can talk it here x axis x axis. So, this is a projection in the y direction. So, this is a perpendicular to x axis. So, this is the way we are uh, doing it here. Now, I know that if v is a unit vector then the projection would be in this form 
and this is also we have discussed that it is a component in the direction of x axis and in the component in the direction of perpendicular to x axis that is in the y direction. So, we can split the vector like this one. Now, so from here let us see what is going to happen in the case of 3 vectors. So, this is the 2 vectors we have taken. Let we have 2 vectors. So, let us consider set of 2 linearly independent vectors. So, suppose I take the set as v 1 and v 2. This is linearly independent. Now, from here if it is linear independent then I can normalize this one. So, we can normalized. So, what, what, how we can normalize v 1 and v 2 and from here I can write my u 1 as v 1 divided by its magnitude or maybe 1 1 or u 2 I can write v 2 as this one. So, from here I know that u 1 and u 2 are li and normalized. So, nothing has changed only the length has become 1 that is it. <coughs> now, I take the set v 1. So, v 1 in non 0 it is linearly independent that I know. So, v 1 I have taken that is not 0 I know that. So, only one vector uh, v 1 is linearly independent that I know. Now, so this is what we are going here. This is my v 1 some vectors and I am taking the line passing through this line uh, this uh, uh, vector v 1. So, suppose this is my v 1 this is my origin I am taking a line passing through this v 1. So, this is the line I am taking. Now, suppose this is unit vector I am representing by u 1. Now, from here one thing is true that if u if v 2 is linearly independent to v 1 then v 2 cannot be on this line because if v 2 lies on this line then they will be linearly independent. So, maybe it cannot be on this line. So, suppose it is lying somewhere here like this one. So, this is suppose my v 2 because it cannot be parallel to v 1 or lying on this v 1. So, it will be it will be tilted. So, whenever it is tilted definitely it will cut the line here. So, suppose this is this one and I call it this is the O where it is cutting. Now, from here I can take the projection of this on this line passing through the vector v 1. So, suppose this is the basically my line is there and I am just taken the v 1 vector because I can write the line L as some uh, scalar maybe I can take it some alpha into v 1 where alpha belongs to real line. So, this is the line. Now, I have taken this one. So, I am taking the projection of v 2 on the v 1. So, now from here I know that the projection of v 2 on v 1 that will be equal to I am taking the dot product with the vector v 1 then I am writing v 1 divided by the magnitude square. So, this is what we have defined from here that if the this is of this form then we can write like this or maybe I can write. 
So, this is uh, we have written or we can write it as v 2 dot v 1. So, I am taking the v 1 and u 1 is the unit vector in that direction. So, maybe I can take it as u 1 here no problem into u 1 and I know that the u 1 magnitude square, but this is equal to 1. So, it is uh, v 2 dot u 1 u 1. So, this is my projection of v 2 in the direction of u 1 or I can call it the projection of v 2 in the direction of v 1. So, this is the way we have taken projection of v 2 on v 1 and I will take the vector u in that direction. Now, from here, so this is my projection. Now, I want to write, so this is suppose O A, O A and B. Now, I want to write what is my a b vector. So, that is the perpendicular vector we are going to take. So, what I am going to do is that I am taking my v 2 and subtracting it, subtracting the part of projection of this along the direction v 1. So, this is I have taken v 2 minus v 2 dot u 1 dot product u 1. So, this is my a b. So, it is v 2 minus the projection along u 1. Now, from here you can see that. So, I call it maybe some y 2. Now, from here you can say that now y 2 is orthogonal to, so this is orthogonal to v 1 or u 1, because this is my y 2 I have taken, I call it my y 2. So, this y 2 is orthogonal to v 1 or u 1. Okay. So, from here so, how I can write y 2 directly? So, y 2 is basically v 2 a vector minus its projection along the line u 1 u 1. So, this is I have taken my y 2. From here y 2 is orthogonal to v 1 or u 1, because u 1 is just unit vector. Now, what do we do that? Now, we uh, normalize y 2 and from there I call it y 2 divided by its magnitude. So, I call it u 2. So, from here I can say that the vector u 1 and u 2. So, these vectors are ortho, ortho normal to each other or the orthonormal vectors are orthonormal. So, I just stop here and write it ortho normal, but ortho normal means that these vectors are, so we started with the linearly independent vector v 1 and v 2 and then we from there we have constructed the vectors which are orthogonal to each other and having the magnitude 1. So, basically what we have now we have started with this one. So, this become the orthonormal basis. So, if I, if I have a, a vector with two bases, uh, the basis having the two vectors then by this process we are able to make it orthonormal. Now, I consider the third one. So,
So, let us take the third part. So, this is uh, we have started with two vectors. Now, now suppose we have set of three vectors. So, suppose I take the basis with vectors v 1, v 2, v 3. So, this is a basis and suppose this is L i. Now, from here I know that I will take my vector v 1, I will normalize it and I will call it u 1. Then I will take the another vector y 2 that will be orthogonal to this one. So, I will take my v 2 minus v 2 taking the dot product with u 1, u 1 and from there I will write u 2 that is y 2 divided by its magnitude. So, it is normalized vector. Now, u 1 and u 2 are orthonormal vectors. Now, what about the third one? So, let us take the v 3. So, in this case what we are going to do is it means that I have a vector suppose I uh, represent uh, y suppose I write here this is my suppose u 1 and I take another vector which is my u 2 they are orthogonal to each other and suppose they make a plane. So, I make a plane from these two vectors. So, this is my plane. Now, in this plane if I take the linear combination of this one that all the vectors will lie here. So, I, I can say from here that this is a subspace basically subspace of R 3 I am taking because I am taking the three vectors. So, using two uh, vector from the basis they will make the subspaces. Now, I take another vector v 3. So, this v 3 is linear combination of v 1 and v 2 uh, this so, uh, sorry this v 3 v 1 v 2 v 3 are linearly independent to each other. So, I definitely the v 3 cannot be a linear combination of v 1 and v 2 because if v 3 is lying in this plane made by u v 1 and v 2 or u 1 and u 2 then they cannot be linearly independent. So, from here I can write now we know that since v 1, v 2, v 3 are linearly independent which implies so, it means that they cannot be coplanar all the threes cannot be lie in the same plane. It means that v 3 cannot lie in the plane span by v 1 and v 2. So, it means that I just take so, th this is my u 1 and u 2 and I can uh, uh, extend the to v 1 and v 2 no problem. So, suppose this is my v 1 and this is my v 2 no problem. <coughs> so, my v 3 cannot be in this line in this plane. So, I just represent by this is my suppose v 3 it is not lying in the plane made up of u 1 and u 2 and suppose I take the projection of this on this plane. So, this is my projection. So, this is the projection we have taken. So, I call this as suppose I call it O A B. So, from here I can write that from here O A this is what I am writing that is equal to projection 
of vector uh, V 3 on the plane spanned by by V 1 and V 2. So, it is the plane spanned by V 1 and V 2 and this is just I am putting the taking the the projection of this one. So, that is O A and A B is the projections in the in the direction perpendicular to this subspace. Now, from here now any vector say y in the subspace subspace spanned by v 1 uh, v 2. So, I can write this I c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 and <coughs> this are uh, linearly independent to each other. So, from here I can call this y as y taking the dot product with u 1 that is a normalized vector in u 1 plus y dot u 2 u 2. Okay, so, spanned by v 1 and v 2 or maybe I just instead of this one I take u 1 and u 2. So, I can write from here as linear combination c 1 u 1 plus c 2 u 2 and u 1 and u 2 I know this is the normalized vector we have taken. And from there I also know that this coordinate c 1 and c 2 can be found using this formula. So, from here now, I can write, so I need a vector which should be a perpendicular to this one. So, this one I need to find out which is a perpendicular to the plane passing from u 1 and u 2. So, this vector, so I call this vector as maybe y 3. So, from here I can find now y 3 is a vector perpendicular. So, this is the sign of perpendicular to the plane spanned by u 1 and u 2. So, how I can find? So, the same way we will find out. So, I can write y 3 as now I have a vector v 3. So, in from the v 3 I will subtract the projection of v 3 on the subspace. So, the which, which subspace? The subspace spanned by this one. So, and subspace is spanned by from here so, now from here I can write that I can write my v 3. So, this is my y 3 and how I can find this one. So, v 3 I am taking the span. So, this one this one I can write as v 3 u 1 u 1 plus v 3 u 2 u 2. This is what we have written because I am taking this projections here. So, if I want to take the projection of this one, so that projection is basically a linear combination of this. Now, I want the projection instead of y I will just write v 3 because I need the projection of v 3 on this plane. So, I will take v 3 over this plane. So, this is v 3 dot u 1 
u1 plus v3 dot u2 u2. So, this is the projection on the plane and that is v3. So, now from here now y3 is perpendicular to u1 and y3 is perpendicular to u2. Now, what I do is that I will take y3 and divide by its magnitude and I call it u3. So, from here I now I can say that my vectors u1, u2, u3 are orthonormal because they are perpendicular to each other and their magnitude is also 1. So, this is the basically how we can proceed for uh, making the given linearly independent set to the orthonormal set. So, let us uh, do this one again. So, I will write here the process that is called the Gram process. So, what we are going to do in this case? Suppose we have a basis, I call it V1, V2, Vn. So, this is a basis of a vector space V. So, it is a n dimensional vector space. Now, what we need to do? So, we want to convert basis B into orthonormal basis. So, this is done by the Gram Smith process. So, how what how we are going to do is that. So, this is the procedure step 1 because I will choose the vector v 1. So, I will take the vector u 1 as v 1 divided by its length. So, I will make u 1 is a vector that is a unit vector. So, u 1 is a normalized vector step 2. Now, in the step 2 I take the vector y 2 this is equal to v 2 this vector I want to make this vector orthogonal to u 1. So, I will take v 2 minus v 2 dot u 1 u 1. So, I have from the v 2 I have removed the projections of v 2 on a u 1. So, I have removed that projection. So, that become the perpendicular part. So, y 2 from here I will call u 2 as y 2 divided by its projection or uh, its magnitude. So, that become the normalized. Then step 3 I will take y 3 as v 3 minus its projection on the plane made up of made by or spanned by u 1 and u 2. So, that will be taking its mag dot product with u 1 u 1 plus v 3 u 2 u 2. So, it is a projections on that plane I am taking v 3 minus of that projection. So, this is perpendicular and from here I will normalize. So, I will make it u 3 that will be my y 3 divided by its magnitude and we keep going like this one. So, in the end in I will get y n. So, what is y n? It will be 
V n minus from here I can take the summation. So, I am taking the V n dot product with u i, u i means the vectors all the vectors i from 1 to n minus 1 like here in when I am talking about 3. So, we are going up to 1 and 2 only when you are talking about 2 I am going only up to 1. So, I am going here into u i. So, this is we are subtracting and that is my nth y n this I can write and from here I will write my u n is equal to y n and divided by its magnitude. So, from here after doing all this calculation now we get a new basis of vector space of vector space v. So, I call this new basis as let us call it I will call right u 1, u 2, u 3, u n a new basis of v. So, let us uh, I call it maybe I should call b 1 or I should uh, represent by s close to the standard basis. So, I represent by s. So, now we take a new basis of vector space v that is s which is s which is orthonormal. So, these are orthonormal. So, we have started with a linearly independent basis and we convert that one into the orthonormal basis with the help of Gram-Smith process. So, this is the benefit of the Gram-Smith process to convert or to transform a given set of linearly independent vectors in a given vector space to a orthonormal set of vectors. So, I will stop here. So, in the today's lecture we have discussed that if we have a basis for a given vector space then how we can convert that basis into the orthonormal basis of the same vector space and that process uh, we have discussed is the Gram-Smith process that is going to convert the given set of bases into the orthonormal basis and in the next lecture we will continue with that one. So, uh, thanks for watching, uh, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.